Suryavanshi follows an anti-terrorism squad trying to foil an attack on Mumbai. It was due for cinematic release in March last year, right when another devastating threat caused screens across India and the world to go dark. When the pandemic hit India, you had films which were ready for release, had the release dates uh, announced, and suddenly, you know, the rug was basically swept off the feet. So then they had to decide whether they go digital, do they hang on, do they wait, and there's a cost of money attached to it. In Bollywood, a major film success still depends heavily on in-theatre audiences, but two devastating waves of coronavirus in 18 months saw cinemas either run at sporadic limited capacity or in most cases shut down altogether. It was a $2.5 billion market. The revenues almost went down to nothing. It came down to one third of that number. First things which were shut down was the movie theatres. Uh, they had to do a lot of things to manage their cost and survive. <laughs> The state of Maharashtra alone accounts for about 30% of India's national box office. So when its government confirmed cinemas could reopen on October 22nd, filmmakers announced release dates for a slew of highly anticipated films. I think we'll be lucky if we can get back to our, on our feet in the next two years. But I guess this step towards uh, uh, theatres reopening is a huge step in that direction. The reopening comes with a list of standard operating procedures. Cinemas will only be allowed to operate at 50% capacity. No food or drink can be taken inside. Session times will be staggered, while thermal checks and masks are mandatory. Staff members must also be fully vaccinated, but the conditions don't spell out that cinema goers need to be as well. It's a welcome development just months after India was recording more than 4,000 COVID-related deaths per day. Just weeks out from Diwali, India has also started allowing vaccinated foreign tourists into the country. So is this all tempting fate? In Delhi, for example, cinema halls have been functioning with these uh, restrictions. Of course, congregations of any kind would lead to some transmission, but uh, it, it wouldn't lead to a third wave of sorts unless a new variant emerges. Holding out hope for India's first feel-good ending in a long time. Manit Sigas, ABC News.